Welcome to Computer Science 320's 2015 Winter 1 Midterm Practice Problems. We're on Problem 1, Part 1. We've already read the intro to the problem. So I'll just start by reading the problem description here. Give a recurrence, T of n, describing the runtime of this algorithm. Be careful to clearly specify both any recursive cases and base cases, and what conditions on the input identify them. To clarify, we started a solution below, but you will need more than the cases we have started. So we've got a case started here, and we're just defining this function t of n. Because this is a recurrence relation, we're going to very likely use this function t on the right-hand side, somewhere in this blank. Um, that's what a recurrence relation means. In at least some of the cases, those will be our recursive cases. In our base cases, we won't be using t on the right-hand side. Because we're going to have different cases, we also need to specify which case holds for which values of n. So our base cases might hold for small values and recursive cases for large ones. That's typical. But what we're actually going to want to do is read the details off of the algorithm. So let's dive in. We want to look back up at the algorithm and figure out where the recursive case is by finding any recursive calls in the code, and figure out where the base case is by finding any cases in the code, uh, maybe an if or an else, or in a language like Java or C or C++, we might see a switch. In a language like Racket, we might see a cond. We're just looking for choices. So if we look up at our algorithm, we've got an if-else, and there's only two branches, so we're likely to have only two cases. And if we look for recursive calls, well, there's two recursive calls in this bottom case, so that bottom case is our recursive case. The top case doesn't have any recursive calls up here, it's just a return right away. Even if it were doing some operations, if those operations don't involve a recursive call, then they are likely to be a base case. So let's divide that up into two cases. That seems likely to be what we need. So I'll just write another case in here. T of n is equal to something when n is equal to something. So now I've got two blanks for my two cases. And all I want to figure out is what are the constraints on those cases? What is n in those cases? And also, what do I put on the right-hand side of my blank? So first of all, what's n? Uh, if we look back up at the problem description, it's the length of the array of integers. And then if we look at our code, well, the if statement tells us under what conditions we drop into the top branch and under what conditions we drop into the bottom one. It says if the length of a is odd or half of the length of a is odd, then we'll hit the top branch. And then in the bottom branch, it makes that a little bit clearer. It says that we're going to reach that bottom branch if the length of a is divisible by 4. So that's what we're really testing. Uh, we're testing whether n is divisible by 4 or not. So we could use the, uh, the, the outline as provided down here, where n is equal to something. And we might say uh, where n is uh, equal to 0 mod 4 or something like that to find divisibility by 4. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to never mind about this equal. I'm going to say when n is divisible by 4, then I'm going to have down here when n is not divisible by 4. And it would be totally OK to just have when n is divisible by 4 and otherwise or something like that. So let's just be careful which case, OK, the bottom case is actually the one where n is divisible by 4. And the top case top branch, that is, is actually the one where n is not divisible by 4. So I kind of reverse them, but as long as I know which one I'm working with, that's fine. Those arrows will help me remember. Now, which of these is easier? Well, the, the top case is easy. We're just returning the first element of that array. So that should be no problem. That should take constant time to look up a particular element in the array. And there's nothing else going on here except for the test to see whether the length is odd or half of the length is odd. We'll assume that we have access to the length of the array because typically you need access to the length of an array. You can't compute it from the array necessarily. So that's all constant time operations, which means we might as well say that t of n is equal to 1. In our class, we're just going to consider constant time to be 1, usually. If you really wanted, you could put t of n is equal to c or d or some constant that you define here. 
but we'll just say t of n equals 1. In the top case, we're going to break the array into four parts. We're going to have a first quarter, a second quarter, a third quarter, and a fourth quarter. It turns out we don't actually use the first and third quarter, but it doesn't really matter. Breaking an array into parts really just means keeping track of the range of indices that you're concerned about. Uh, part one starts at index zero and it ends at index you know, 100. And part two starts at index 101 and it ends at index 201 or something like that. Uh, all of that's just going to take constant time. It's just computing a few variables based on the length. So these four operations at the top are all constant time operations. So we're not going to have to worry too much about them. Uh, down here, we have an addition that's also going to take constant time. Note that even if we change that to a multiplication, it still takes constant time. It doesn't mean we're suddenly going to multiply the amount of time that the two operands of the multiplication operator take. Uh, addition, multiplication, division, subtraction, those are all constant time operations. But then we have our recursive calls. Recursive calls are actually the easiest part of a recurrence relation to solve because you've already got a function that describes how long the, recur the recursive code, the algorithm, takes. And that function is the one that you're defining. You have t. t tells you how long the function takes for a particular array, a particular length of array. So all we need to know is how long are the arrays we're passing in here. So we call Keddy on a2. a2 is the second fourth of the array. And each fourth is one fourth as long as the original array. So that's going to take t of n over 4 time. So that's that first recursive call. The second recursive call is also going to take t of n over 4 time because a4 is also one fourth of the length. So we could say t of n over 4 plus another t of n over 4, or we can just group those together. That's 2 t of n over 4. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to say 2 t of n over 4. So it takes 2 t of n over 4. And don't forget, we also spent constant time doing the addition. And it's worth putting that in just in case. Merging these two subproblems here just takes constant time. But there are other algorithms, like merge sort, for example, where that merger or even splitting problem takes a lot more time than that. So that's our recurrence relation. We have t of n is equal to 2t of n over 4 plus 1 when n is divisible by 4. And we have t of n is equal to 1 when n is not divisible by 4. And that completes our problem. Next, we will move on to the next problem.